the highest honor God can give to man is binding himself with that man. Okay? The highest honor that God can give a man is binding himself to that man. And when I say binding himself to that man, it means that you have a dimension, hallelujah, you have a dimension of a relationship with God that God names that dimension after you. Okay, you don't understand that one. Let me try to face it. There was such a, a deep relationship with Abraham that in later years, God comes to call himself the God of Abraham. You understand? There was such a deep relationship with Jacob and God, between Jacob and God, in the later years, he calls himself the God of Jacob. Now, in this day and age of Christianity, unfortunately, as I mentioned, I don't think two weeks goes without me complaining. There is a relationship that is anchored on Papa, the man at the altar, the man that prays for you. But you see, this man, God lowered him so much, God called him shepherd. Not a very honorable name when we just go by the normal standards of life. God lowered this man, named him a shepherd, simply to guide his flock. But the desire in the heart of God was to have men covenant him, to have man, men covenant themselves to him so much that the generations that follow you, when God is described, they would call him the God of Mutegi. Nivile Mutegi metembea na buwana. And that is what I push to this church, to this ministry. The need of a personal relationship. That is why today I'm teaching you this dimension called covenant. Covenant relationship. It is covenant relationship. We see, we started by saying covenant relationships are non-emotional. This is where you determine that this is the way I will walk with God. And come rain, come shine, I will walk with the Lord. Say my amen. amen. A man called David was so covenanted to the Lord that one time he goes to Arauna, the Jebusite, and the Lord has instructed him, go and make, give a sacrifice there. That is First Chronicles Chapter 21 and verse 24. He was so covenanted with God concerning his giving. He goes to make a sacrifice and this man wants to give him. Arauna wants to give him. To Kuangombe, just take these cows and give them as a sacrifice to your God. But the Bible says, First Chronicles 21, 24. But King David replied to Arauna, No, I insist on paying the full price. I will not take to the Lord what is yours or sacrifice burnt offering that costs me nothing. That is a man that is working with the covenant. Blessed be the name of the Father. That is a man that is working with the covenant. Say my amen. amen. The man called Abraham was so covenanted with God that in Abraham, Genesis chapter 14, verse 22, when they, when they have rescued, Genesis chapter 14 and verse 22, when they have gone to war and they have rescued Lot, and the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the king tells him, take the property, give me the people. Abraham answers him and says, but Ab the Bible says, but Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord. Okay? God most high, creator of heaven and earth, and have taken an oath that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the thong of a sandal, so that you'll not be able to say, I made Abraham rich. He comes to this point, and uh, it comes to a point now. They are coming for more, and the king says, just give me the people, take their property. And then Abraham says that I have made an oath. I have covenanted to the Lord. I am not going to take anything from you. Never shall man take the credit of blessing me, Abraham. A man living with a covenant. Say my amen. And I've told you about Daniel in that book of Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10. The Bible says that a decree was made 
Anybody who worships contrary to the king's demand shall be put in the lion's den. Then the news comes to the people that the king has said, anybody who is found worshiping contrary to the demands of the king shall be thrown in the lion's den. And everybody becomes afraid. But then Daniel remembers, I have a covenant with God. Let the lion eat me, being obedient to God. And he went, and as per the covenant, he had told God that I will be opening my window facing Jerusalem. So though the king has uh, issued an order, he remembers that part of the covenant was opening the window. And what will happen if he opens the window? The people who are outside will see that Daniel is worshipping contrary to what the king has, has instructed. But he says, if I die, I die. But I will die keeping the covenant that I have with Jehovah, the Lord God of Israel. Say my amen. amen. And that is why I say that the covenant relationship, that is the highest form of relationship you can have with God. And now this one eliminates your emotions. It is a covenant you make with God and come rain and come shine. Unless the Lord steps his foot before you and says, thus far you've come and no further shall you go. Enough is enough. That is when you stop. But once you've made it with God, let me tell you, you will have life that is ever growing. Results that are never ceasing in Jesus Christ's name. The power of the covenant will be revealed when you are tested. Amen? Daniel had a covenant with God. And the power of that covenant was revealed when Daniel was tested. And I was teaching this week and telling people that, you see, when the lion could not bite Daniel, it was because of a dominion that had been established. Okay? Daniel had gotten dominion over time of practicing this covenant.